Presently, the Attorney General is charging the police to expedite investigations into the arrest and detainment of the Democracy Hub protesters. What is your take on this issue? Say, my brother, I, the only thing I can say right now is that Attorney General, the police and judiciary have been professional and lawful about all these things. Now they, are, they, they just want to quiet quite wash uh, themselves, they want to redeem their images. And that is not what, something we should, we should be applauding them for. You do you understand that? And uh, for all other issues concerning the Attorney General, we don't want to even talk about it. Now what we want is that they, they drop the charges against the detain, uh, 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 detainees and then they work on Galamsey. That's all. Okay, so, so far it's been over a week since um, over 53 people were reminded. Yeah. What is the take? Because currently the protest should end tomorrow. Yeah. Um, the second week should be the following week coming. Mm -hmm. What do you think this protest will be able to do to compel government to drop the charges? Because um, the police have listed about 10 charges, which include destruction of properties, um, uh, um, let's say hand manhandling some police officers. Do you think these charges are accurate? And if so, are you willing to drag the government itself to court? Those, those are uh, um, uh, legal issues, so I can't actually say whether they are accurate or not. But we all are witnesses to some of the issues out there, or some of the uh, charges they've raised out there. And within us, honestly and genuinely, we know what they are trying to do. We know that it's just a tactic to suppress the people, to taint uh, the uh, culture of protest in the country. Remember, I see. The, this uh, demonstration and protest is having an impact. Yes, it's screwing the communication and uh, 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 the processes. Now, Attorney General came out uh, just yesterday or two days ago to, to say that when they table a bail application, they are not going to oppose it. And this is one of the impacts of the conversations we've been having over the internet and then which gives emergence to this protest. Now, it's, it's go, uh, going to have a lot of impact because they have realized that they cannot completely suppress the voice of the people. Now this is an indication that the voice of the people cannot be suppressed. So it's going to have a lot of effect. Okay, so let's look at the current health of the um, detainees. What is, your current, what is the current status of their health? Are they in good condition? Have you heard from all the 53 uh, detainees as we stand now? Great, so we've heard from most of them we, we have people on the ground who are getting in touch with them because they are Ghanaians, they are citizens. And an attempt on one person uh, is a, a deliberate attempt on all of us. So that is why we are concerned. They, most of them are fit, they are in high spirit, knowing that the youth are out there fighting for them once again and fighting for the same cause they, they, they fought for. And um, let me say, as we speak now, they are still dispersing people, moving them from one cell to another. And I don't know the reason behind moving people from one cell to other. Because the only indication it gives is that you are trying to uh, suppress their right to basic legal representation. And that is what it means. You don't want their lawyers to find their whereabout or know their whereabout. You move someone from uh, uh, cantonment and you take the person to someone. For what, so, what reason? The charges you have raised. Have, have, have yeah. you engaged the police with regards to um, the movement of these detainees? Our lawyers are in charge. Okay. We have a big legal, we have legal teams in charge, and they are doing excellently well. Okay. Yeah. So I recall that the Accra Circuit Court has charged the police to ensure that the detainees are fed twice. Can you, um, authority, <laughs> say that now, they are being fed? What I know is that we feed our people two times, uh, three times a day. We feed them. We give them food. We give them water. And I know that for sure. Now, at times where food does not get to them early, they call us and request for food. Is it an indication that they are being fed twice? Good. That is a question you should be asking yourself. Thank okay. you. Okay. So, uh, my last question. What is your message to Ghanaians who believe that the issue of Galamse is far from Accra and are deciding not to join this protest? Because, um, I can see, I believe that more would be joining, but currently the number is gaining momentum. What is your message to Ghanaians? So, you see, naturally, people would have different uh, uh, concerns and other ones. Now, they need education. The people need to be educated. People think that people engaging in Galamse, just go there and then take charge of concessions and they start. That is not how it works. So it means, it means they are not privy to the processes, the procedures that lead to someone even encroaching a land and starting uh, what's so uh, legal or illegal mining activities. They are not 
uh, privy to those uh, 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 information. And then we need, that is why we are doing this. We are educating them that the people who have been mandated, okay, to protect and preserve our environment and take charge of mining is the uh, Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources. Are you getting it? So if this is the ministry mandated to take charge or, or of protecting and preserving our environment and people are out there mining, let's say that they, have, they, they don't know about it, they have not been licensed, let's even say that they have not been licensed, then whose work is it to go and deal with the issue? It is not for us to go there and deal with the issue. We are uh, uh, elected people and they appointed people to work uh, uh, together with them to serve us right so when things are not going well we go to the people we have elected who we gave power we did not give power to the people or, uh, or, or on the lands they're destroying the land and the water we did not give them power we gave those people we elected power so we go back to them and they go and deal with them so that is the information that people need and i think this time we are not going to uh, uh, massage bruised egos and mediocrity anymore we have to face the issue thank you okay so you want the lands ministry to act now to stop Galamse. They are together with the Lands Commission, Forestry Commission. What exactly do you want the government to do? Halt mining? Because currently illegal mining, Galamse, is illegal, so I don't know what we are banning. But do you want them to ban small-scale mining or large-scale mining? What um, directive do you want them to give so that the issue of the destruction of the water bodies and forest reserves is currently nipped in the bud? Great, so I'm going to touch on that surfacely because we have... We have um, uh, a petition and the petition at the end of the day we are going to read it out and it entails whatsoever thing we've listed there. but one of the uh, very few things we stated the very first thing is that we are giving them an ultimatum of seven days to ban illegal mining activities and any other mining activities that tends to destroy our land our water and our future so whether it is legal or illegal mining so far as it is destroying for illegal they have to ban, uh, ban it totally but then whether it's legal small scale or whatever it is so far as it contributes to the devastation cause then it needs to be banned you get it because if it is legal and it is killing us uh, should we allow it who gave the licenses so it is not just about illegal mining we are talking about the deliberate attempt to destroy our land to destroy our water bodies to, to destroy the environment. And this is slowly killing us, the human resources, and fast-paced killing the natural resources. And that's, that's just it. Okay, so the Lands Minister, Samuel Abujinapo, has somewhat shut down calls for the ban on small-scale mining. He argues that should there be a ban, it would disrupt the economy because the small-scale miners provide 40% of the Ghana's, of Ghana's um, foreign exchange. What is your take? Because you're going to petition him to stop um, legal mining and illegal mining that are posing a threat to the country's forest reserves. Do you think that this position would somehow affect your petition before him? Absolutely. He doesn't have a point. Let me tell you, like I said, we are not calling that mining activities be halted. That's not what we are saying. We are saying that any mining activity that poses danger to our lives, to water, to land and to the environment be banned. So you don't have a message. You don't even have an excuse when you say that. Because we have some small scale miners who are adhering and acting within the remit of uh, whatever conduct they've been given. I get our restrictions they've been given. And we have various LIs. That six, uh, speaks to uh, the, their uh, direction and limitations or restrictions. Now, we are asking them that they should implement those LIs well and make sure that the, those who are doing it legally do not destroy the environment. We can't die before we, 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 uh, we improve our economy. If we improve the economy and we die, who then benefits from the improvement in the economy? Thank you very much for your time.